Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nairi, also known as Wedding Fashion Expert. This week, we are breaking down the difference between wedding dress alterations, modifications, and custom changes. What are the differences between these three things? What do they entail? Giving you all the details in this week's video. Before we dive into this week's topic, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, drop me a comment below, let me know if there's a particular video topic you'd like me to create a video on. I am here for you, guiding you along the way leading up to your special day. For those of you that are new to my channel, welcome. I am so honored that you have found me. I am, of course, a wedding fashion expert, stylist, buyer, wear so many different hats at Lavella Bridal located in Los Angeles, California. For daily content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, at Lavella Bridal, at Lavella Plus, and at Wedding Fashion Expert. Don't forget to hit that follow button on TikTok, at Lavella Bridal, and at Wedding Fashion Expert as well. Lately, I have been getting so many questions from the brides I have been helping, and a little bit of confusion, kidding, a lot, a bit of confusion, on what is involved in wedding dress alterations, modifications and custom changes. A lot of these get blurred together and get combined into one and then people's assumption on cost kind of gets skewed. So I wanted to create a video on this because I felt it would be really valuable to break down these three things so that you get an understanding of what these words and actions really mean when it comes to the bridal store, the bridal stylist, the seamstress that you're communicating with so that you know exactly what terminology means what and you're using it in the right context and just going to give you all of my thoughts on this for you let's begin with alterations every dress for the most part requires some level of alterations I want to tell you what is included and what we would consider an alteration so when you order your wedding dress we take your bust your waist and your hip measurement based on those three measurements we line it up to the designer size chart and we get you to the closest size on the size chart to identify what size is best to order for you I am going to be doing an entire video on what I recommend on how to pick your sizing and all the different things brides try to do when it comes to picking their size that video will take place next week so be sure to tune in next Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time I will be breaking down all of those details for you in the context of this video we'll continue on with you pick your sizing now for someone like me my bust and my waist measurements are very proportionate my hip measurement is my largest measurement which takes me to larger sizing and then I need to be able to take in the bust and the waist because I need to accommodate my hip measurement. That being said, alterations include body work, either taking in the body or letting out the body. Nine out of 10 bridal gowns come in requiring some level of body work being done. It is so rare for a bride to get her dress and not have any work needing to be done at the body. There's always a little bit of a tweak that needs to happen. So alterations include any body work needing to be done, a hem, so that's the length of the dress. You will need your shoes for that to determine the length to have that altered, and a bustle. A bustle is when your train that's long gets picked up so you can dance and move around freely throughout the day. Along with any potential strap that maybe if your dress has a strap or a long sleeve, the long sleeve will likely need to be taken in a strap will need to be fitted to you properly those are all alterations it is taking the dress and it's as is condition making some changes for it to fit you better that's what we consider an alteration on a gown so when you are quoted pricing from a seamstress or from a bridal store on alterations those are going to be the things that are included in alterations bodywork hem bustle and any sleeve adjustment that you may need. Now let's go into modifications. A modification for a wedding dress is also done in alterations. Let's hypothetically say that you order a strapless dress that's just straight across, kind of like the top of my neckline here, even though it's a scoop, but it would just continue straight across. And you decide that you want to make it a sweetheart neckline. So you want to create a little dip into the top of your dress. 
If you are asking a seamstress to create a sweetheart neckline or lower the back of your dress or raise the back of your dress or create a custom sleeve for you, these would be considered modifications after you have purchased the dress. You are modifying the dress that you purchased. So there are alteration costs, and then modification cost. And that's the difference. A lot of brides will come to me and say, my friend paid $2,000 for alteration. The alterations cost more than what she paid for the dress. And my first question is, did she modify it? They usually say, what do you mean modify it? Did she change the neckline? Did she have a custom something created? Yes, she did. Well, that's not an alteration. That is a modification. And that's why I'm creating this video so that you can have an understanding when people are talking about prices of things, you want to be very clear on what exactly was done. In alterations, you are typically charged, depending on where you go, on the amount of labor that is being done on the dress. So you'll have your alterations, which are standard changes to the dress, and then you have your modifications that are not standard. That is you deciding that you wanna make changes to the existing gown. We do also sell individual sleeves or sh off the shoulder straps, a spaghetti type strap. Now, if you're buying a ready-made strap and you're just having it sewn on, I wouldn't consider that a modification. I'd probably put that in the alteration component because you're just sewing something. You're not creating something from scratch. It's just being attached to it. Okay. So for me, I would consider that in an alteration. It's not really a big deal, but if you are doing something completely from scratch, or something that doesn't exist on the gown that they are changing, that is a modification. Wedding dress customization is when you make custom changes to the dress that you are ordering from the manufacturer. Let's say you wanted to do that sweetheart neckline or you wanted to lower the back. If you are doing that through the designer before the dress comes in, that is a custom change and there is a fee associated with that when you place the order on the dress. Something I want you to keep in mind when you are doing any custom changes to a wedding dress, oftentimes the way that you envision a custom change and the designer envisions the custom change can be two different things. Sometimes it can be completely in harmony and turn out beautifully and other times what you thought it was going to be and what the designer did can be two completely different things and it does lead to disappointment when the bride receives her dress. I also see when brides do custom changes for their dress, they have been staring at the photos of the dress that they tried on in the sample in the store and brides end up falling in love with the thing that they changed when they ordered it. So then when they receive their dress, it's a little bit of a culture shock because you've been staring at the dress that you had on the day that you bought it, but you changed the things about it when you ordered it. So you did custom changes, right? And it looks completely different and you're disappointed. I do have a lot of brides who do custom changes and are so much happier with the dress when it comes in. So it does ebb and flow depending on what those changes were. A word of advice for me uh, from my experience is if you are making a lot of changes to a dress prior to purchasing it, it's probably not the best dress for you. You know you found the right dress when you have the least amount of changes to no changes that you are making to the dress that's how you know you have found the one. So whenever I have a bride putting on a dress, wanting to do all these custom changes, while some brides think that's so cool and some stylists really sell a bride on, oh, you can personalize it, you can customize it, you can make it your own, I can completely appreciate that element of customization and uniqueness to your look, having something that nobody else has. I have just found in my experience that it also comes with consequences and it's not always the exciting, happy finale that we expect once the dress comes in. So I encourage you to purchase a dress that has the least little to no changes that you are making to it 
And if you want to make it uniquely yours, do it in the way in which you style the dress. You could also add a sleeve of some kind, a shrug of some kind that's customizing it, but you're knowing exactly what you're getting. It's not like a custom change that's unknown. You get to see all those things prior to purchasing all the elements and piecing it all together. So in a way that would be through accessories and accessorizing different components to it, adding a belt, all of those types of things. But I have also had brides who have bought dresses, told me they wanted to do modifications, like add a plunging neckline, add a slit to the dress, where I knew that that dress had the structural soundness to accommodate these modifications and alterations because the designer would not do those custom changes. And we have executed them and they have been absolutely flawless and beautiful. So while yes, there are success stories for this, it is 50-50. There are 50-50 odds that you're absolutely going to love the changes that you make and the modifications that you make. And there's a 50% chance that you're not going to like it at all. So I ask you to tread lightly. And the reason why there was such success on some of my clients is because they were able to see the things that they were going to modify and alterations on other dresses. We just didn't have the exact lace pattern and dress neckline and slit to go along with the lace. So I have had brides who have purchased another dress that had the components of what they wanted, but yet we needed to tweak a few things for them to make it exactly what they want and it worked out beautifully. I do also have to mention that it works most successfully on brides who are not perfectionists. If you are a perfectionist, kind of like me, it can be difficult because you like to micromanage certain elements and it could drive you absolutely crazy and it's not worth that stress going through that. So if you are a really like, cool bride, whatever happens goes, you're cool with it, it's okay if it's not perfect, you're a great candidate. Someone like me, I'm gonna lose sleep over it and it's just so much better for me to find something that's finished that I don't have to think about, I don't have to have anxiety over. I show up, my dress arrives how I want it and you're good to go. I hope that this added more clarity on alterations, modifications, custom changes, what that entails, and that way you use the terminology accurately when you're talking to your stylist and have a better understanding of the way in which the pricing and cost ratio works for all of it as well. If you have any further questions or need some clarity on some of the things I touched on in this video, drop me a comment below. I'm always here for you and happy to answer your questions. For more videos and tips like these, be sure to tune in every Wednesday, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I will see you in next week's video.